Hey everyone, I'm Jake with the Lost Isle team, and uh, today we're going to be jumping into the December devlog that just went out uh, yesterday, December 20th. And uh, I'm just going to start by going line by line through uh, what's new in the devlog, and then I'll jump into a test scene and kind of showcase uh, some of the new things. Some of them will be pretty polished, some of them will be pretty buggy, so we'll get a, <laughs> we'll get a nice mixture of uh, what's going on. Uh, okay, so missives and musings, decking the halls. So hello all, the holidays are upon us and we're squeezing in as much fresh development as possible before the end of 2023. Here's what the team has been working on this past month. What's new? Vehicles. Uh, still in early development, this exciting feature will allow players to travel across the vast open world in both speed and style. For now we're starting with the classic horse on land and rowboat on water, with more varied options on the roadmap. And so you can see here in this image that there's a player sitting in, in a boat on water. And so this is our first iteration of vehicles in the game, and this is a really exciting development for me personally. Um, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I play an open world game, I kind of dread travel time. You know, it's cool that the worlds are so big, but uh, if if there aren't vehicles, if there's nothing, if there's not something that you can mount and kind of fast travel with, it's uh, at least in my opinion, it can be kind of miserable. And so I'm excited that we're that that we're starting to implement these. Uh, and so I'll jump into the game really quick and show you what these look like. All right, so two quick disclaimers before we jump in and I show you what's about to happen here. Uh, the first is that this is just a test scene within Unity. Uh, it's not super polished and it's just for testing features. And then two, as it mentioned in the devlog, these are these are the very first iterations. And so they're gonna be buggy, uh, but they're works in progress and, and the stuff will get fixed. And so for now we can just laugh at whatever is about to happen. All right, so let's dive in here. Okay, so <laughs> the boats. Uh, one of the physics features of boats is, is buoyancy. And for some reason, when you spawn a boat in right now, it just starts bouncing around. Uh, but it'll it'll kind of level out in a second here. But it just keeps bouncing and bouncing. But this is cool. So you come up, you know, you can just use the boat. Let's see, how can I get on? Let me on. There we go. And then we're boating. And for now, there's no uh, animations that go along with it. You can see it's it's jittery, it's stuttery, it's you know doing all the things that a first iteration of something does. But uh, but it's starting to function, and this is really cool. Um, some of the things that are coming up soon are you know whoever's actually driving the boat will be rowing uh, with oars, and these empty seats will actually be able to be filled by passengers. So that'll be really cool. So if you have, you know, a party of, of a few different people, you can have a driver and some passengers and any anywhere there's a waterway, you can quickly travel um, from point A to point B. So this is really cool. I love me some vehicles. See what happens if you go on land. Nothing. All right, well, <laughs> I'll leave my boat there for now. Okay, the other vehicle that we mentioned is just like a standard horse. Uh, we're still working on our horse models and so for now we just have this random skeletal horse uh which you know may end up being in the game or not uh, i don't know if we're, i don't know if we'll keep this or not but for now it's just the the test the test horse vehicle all right so you come over here you look at the saddle gives you the option to ride and you jump on and we've got a horse now obviously a couple things right away that need fixed it's really um it's really bouncy, right? So the camera kind of makes you a little nauseous. So that'll be fixed. The turning is pretty rough. Like you have to make the wide, I'm turning as sharp as I can right now. <laughs> it's a, it requires a wide berth. Uh, but the speed is awesome. I mean, it, it's functional, it's in the game. And this will be another great feature that just lets you move around the open world much faster than on foot. All right, and we'll do a moving dismount. Whoop. Nice. All right, back into the devlog. So the next part here is enemy AI overhaul continued. So uh, if you read the last devlog, uh, there was there was a big chunk about how we're completely overhauling our uh, enemy AI, and so that's still an ongoing process. Um, so the overhaul continues with some interesting modifications. A new stat system for damage calculations, limb colliders for more dynamic combat, and new AI models with unique behaviors, including a dark summoner, a type of necromancer who continuously summons the dead to fight for him as long as he lives. So he's also like a magic slinger, so he'll be shooting spells at you uh, while summoning the dead. So you're kind of, they're tough. So I've, I fought a few of them and they're, 
they're tough but really fun. All right, then a skeleton rogue. And keep in mind, these are just really generic filler names for now. They'll they'll actually have you know more special names in the future. Uh, but the skeleton rogue is a stealthy backstabber that becomes skittish if you see it coming. Uh, so basically, it's always trying to sneak up on you. But if you like lock eyes with it and you you know you, you, the camera's looking at it, then it'll get skittish and kind of back away and be a little bit more careful. And then a skeleton defender, a shield bearer specializing in blocking incoming attacks. So as you can imagine, just a short sword and shield, uh, just a really defensive unit. Uh, there are also now patrols of diverse skeleton warriors, the forces of Malroth, who patrol the roads and guard loot piles. And lest you make the mistake of assuming they might be pushovers like I did, I assure you after meeting my end at their hand many times that they are formidable foes. And we'll jump into the build and I'll show you what a couple of these are like. All right, so again, these are, you know, first iteration enemies, and so there's a lot of balancing and, and tuning that has to be done. And right now they're very hard to fight when you're, you know, just in your starter armor with, with just a dagger. And part of that's intentional, you know, we want, we want you to feel um, like you're a survivor at the beginning and then uh, the more you thrive on the island and progress, the stronger you get and the easier it is to fight enemies. So, so part of that's intentional, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what kind of tuning needs to, needs to take place in the future. All right, so I'm going to spawn in a couple enemies, and, and this is just for a little taste. So our, our developer who's, work, who's, you know, actively working on this part of the project, his name's Nick, he's awesome. Um, he's actually going to do a really detailed showcase of each of the AI enemies and their different behaviors and uh, animations and things like that. And so for now, this is just a really small uh, sample. All right, so this is the Dark Summoner or uh, Skeletal Summoner unit. You can see he's pretty twisted. He's got magic. If you get too close, he shoots magic at you. Looks like he's trying to take a, a defensive position here. Okay, and this is his like necromancy animation so he just spawned. oh man so he just spawned a skeletal swordsman or long sword what is that one this guy's got a long sword long swordsman dude I, i'm already almost dead and i haven't even <laughs> done anything oh man okay he's spawning another one what's this one gonna be another long swordsman so we have two long swordsmen See if I can get this guy to swing at me. The pro dude, I can't like bait it because he's gonna he has such long range, he's just gonna chop me. Oh boy. What's the summoner doing over here? <laughs> Dang it. Right, now, admittedly, I did not put up very much of a fight. So I was just trying to show kind of their behaviors, but um, but there's no way. If you just have a dagger, there's no way you get. If you get close enough to hit the long swordsman, for example, they swing on you, and their you know their range and their damage is way higher than yours. And so, with these new like patrols where they're on the roads and they're guarding loot piles and stuff, so the best thing to do is when you don't have any gear and you're just starting out fresh on the server, you probably just want to avoid them uh, entirely because it it's it'll be pretty near impossible to, to take them on. And then, yeah, just keep an eye out for that AI showcase that Nick's going to release here in a few weeks. It'll be, really, it'll be really awesome to see. The next section here is the lore primer. Our collection of lore for Lost Isle has long been gathering dust, and the time for it to finally come forth is now. We've started production on a lore teaser video that will premiere early 2024, but in the meantime, we'll be dropping some bite-sized chunks like this brief history overview. So we... Some people have been asking, like, what... what is there a story behind Lost Isle? What's it all about? You know, why is there magic on the island, etc.? And so we actually do have quite a substantial amount of lore. It's just uh, it hasn't been the right time to you know make it public, I guess. And so we're just starting to do that now. And so we put together this just one-page summary uh, that kind of details you know the really brief history of the Lost Isle. And so I'll just read that really quick. So it says, from afar, the Lost Isle looks like any other island of the sea but beneath the surface lies the underground prison vault of the fallen god Mauroth. Illuminon, a dutiful god and the steward of Earth, is entrusted with the task of being his warden. Although largely diminished, Mauroth's remnant celestial energies continuously seep through the Earth, becoming infused with the natural world. Early explorers learned to harness these energies in the form of practical magics, greatly accelerating the expansion of agriculture and settlements. 
Chaos inevitably ensued as wars broke out over control of rare resources. Illuminon's attention was drawn elsewhere, and her vigilance over Malroth slackened for a time. Still imprisoned, Malroth used this period of relative freedom to his advantage, corrupting wicked men and twisting them into an unruly, loathsome subhuman species, raising the dead as an army in his service, and summoning a raging tempest encircling the entire island to prevent unwanted scrutiny. Whether through deceit and false promise, or by the truth and sheer tenacity, you, the player, are amongst the most ambitious adventurers of the world who have sailed to the Lost Isle to stake your claim of rich rewards. And that's it. That's the brief history. Uh, there'll be more to come. There'll, there's a, uh, like we mentioned, there's a there's a big lore video that we're working on that'll kind of go into more detail and things like that. And and periodically we'll just drop little bits here and there to to give more of the backstory. And lastly, we have the other notable changes. Uh, the first one now possible to toggle between building and upgrading when building hammer is equipped. This one is actually a massive quality of life improvement for me personally, uh, and so I actually want to showcase this really quick. Uh, in the build. So the way that building used to work is that when you were, you know, building foundation pieces, so I'll just place a couple here. To upgrade them, you had to physically, uh, you know, go to open your inventory and locate the resource you want to upgrade it with, so in this case, wood. And then, so the wood had to be in your action bar and equipped. Um, and then you could come up and it would hover over it and then uh, you could upgrade. But when you ran out, see what just happened. So I ran out of the resource, it unequipped it, and now I'd have to go back into my inventory and equip a new stack. So if I had more pieces to upgrade, I'd have to go back and, you know, it's just a bunch of clicks. The way that it works now, uh, so same as before, you place your foundation, a couple of these down, and then instead of having to dig through your inventory and find the resources manually, uh, you just, uh, the hammer has a toggle function. So you know, it goes from regular building hammer like this with all these options to you push a hotkey and it toggles to upgrade. So now you can see the number, uh, 2,810 out of 200. So it's pulling together all my resources in my inventory. I don't have to equip them anywhere. And without having to switch from the hammer or anything, I can just upgrade. And this is a huge quality of life improvement for a lazy bum like me. And then you switch it back. And say so you want to build some walls. And then without having to switch anything in my inventory, switch out weapons, anything, I just toggle to upgrade. And it's super fast and easy. So this is awesome for me. This is a 10 out of 10 giant win for, for building for me. All right, back to the devlog. All right, so the next item, this actually goes together with the first one, but automatically utilize upgrade resources from anywhere in your inventory. So that's what I was talking about, where it pulls together all your resources, and then when you toggle to upgrade, it just uses them all. Super awesome. Okay, crafting, audio mixer, and tooltip UI improvements. Added cloth physics to player armor and NPC models. Harvestable trees and rocks and breakable loot containers now break into many pieces when harvested or destroyed. And then lastly, as always, the perpetual task of bug fixing. In this case, related to maps, store keys, consumables, and deployables. Just a reminder that we regularly upload videos and images to our socials at Play Lost Style. So that's Twitter, X, uh, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok that showcase new features. So if you want to stay in the loop about updates and progress, make sure to give us a follow. And that brings us to the end of the December 2023 Lost Style Devlog. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. Happy holidays. See you next time.